There's a guy by the name of Kurt Bardella, and uh, he used to work for Breitbart, and he went on MSNBC to cry about evil Bernie bros and how they're so similar to MAGA people. Piece. Uh, you talk about the Twitter Bernie bros uh, and say that they actually have a lot in common with President Trump's uh, army of online uh, supporters, the MAGA, the MAGA group there. Uh, so talk to us a little bit about, first of all, explain to us who the Bernie bros are uh, and why are you making this comparison? Well, the Bernie bros first came along in the 2016 campaign, and they seem to be the uh, vocal, kind of almost mob-like, die-hard, cult-like following of Bernie Sanders. Now, I should be clear, Bernie Sanders has, has throughout the campaign in 2016, uh, decried some of the tactics they used on social media, the bullying and the, and the targeting primarily of people of color, women, uh, who disagree with, with Senator Sanders' platform. But one of the things that I've experienced firsthand is when, when I've come on this very program and have raised valid concerns about Senator Sanders and, and his viability, immediately the Twitter sphere, the Bernie bros, go hardcore attack mode. And, and the traits and the words and and the rhetoric that they use, the only thing I've ever seen close to that is what MAGA people do, what the Trump voters do. And I think that it's a very dangerous and disturbing uh, trend to see, uh, particularly when Democrats are trying to show that there is a better way than what we've seen from Trump, better than the divisiveness and the use of fear and hatred and extremism to try to scare people into a particular ideology. We have to be a Democratic Party that's okay with honest disagreements, that's okay with raising valid concerns and valid questions. I would like to think that Senator Sanders himself wants that for the Democratic Party, but some of his most ardent and hardcore supporters are taking some very, I think, dangerous rhetorical measures. And I think that Senator Sanders in the long run is going to need to be a little bit more vocal about calling that out and condemning that. Yeah, no, he doesn't. And uh, you guys are absurd. So <laughs> let's dive into this. First of all, guys, the game is rigged. And here's what I mean by that. People get to say anything they want about Bernie Sanders and his supporters. They get to be as vituperative as they want. They get to be as negative as they want. They get to say, throw any smear against the wall, straw man his policy positions. It doesn't matter. They can say anything they want. And if you respond, no, 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 you're not allowed to respond. If you say anything in response, ah, Bernie bro, Bernie bro, oh my God, with this broness. Oh, you're so like MAGA people. Ah, oh, Bernie bro. So you see how the game is rigged? The game is rigged because they get to say anything. And if you respond to what they say, then, you know, you're out of bounds. By definition, you're immediately out of bounds for responding to it. Well, then, you know, I submit to these people. What should Bernie supporters say when his record is being mischaracterized, he's being strawmanned, there's unfair characterizations of him? What should they do? What should they do? Because they, listen... These are people who are in the media game, and as soon as they get people angry at them in their menchies, they lose it and they think it's the most important issue in the world. <laughs> they really do. They think like, oh my God, people are yelling at me in my mentions. This is like, you know, a national crisis. How many articles have been written about Bernie bros since the, you know, he first started running? And like, how many establishment journalists think this is a giant issue? It's like, no, it's not a giant issue. You say dumb things and then people respond to it. And then you're like, oh, how dare they? This is a, this is an attack on me. This is an attack on my profession. And somebody needs to do something about this. You're just way too online, dog. <laughs> you're just way too online. Okay, so the other point is, uh, first of all, I don't think that, you know, the Bernie bros, and that is a pejorative, by the way, and it erases the people of color and the women who support Bernie, but... Um, I don't think that the Bernie supporters are like Trump supporters, but let's say for a second that they are. Okay, is, do you realize that you're saying Bernie will probably win? <laughs> like, this, has, this doesn't occur to people. <laughs> oh my God, the online Bernie supporters are so much like the online Trump supporters. And Donald Trump rode a wave of strong support online and otherwise Right into the White House. <laughs> what the fuck? I mean, come on, man. Like, dude, people don't stop and think about shit. Like, I think Bernie supporters are a lot like Trump supporters. So that would mean he's probably going to win. Because <laughs> Trump had the strong, loud support online. If Bernie's got the same thing, okay, tick tock. President Sanders, baby. Like, oh my God, it's so funny. Oh, it's so funny. All this stuff is so funny. 
So yeah, like even if we accept their premise, that could kind of be a good thing because it means Bernie's going to win. Um, then there's just the flat out lies. They're, they're bullying and targeting people of color and women. Not a single group of Bernie supporters has ever, in the history of Bernie supporters existing, targeted women and people of color. That's never happened. You know what, you know what uh, Bernie supporters do? If they see somebody saying something dumb, saying something untrue, smearing their guy, lying, whatever it might be, they'll go after them. Do you, do you think there's they stop to do like a skin color check? That there's like a committee of Bernie voters who are like, you know, we could go after this gentleman over here, but he's a white man and he's 53 years old. Hold our fire, because usually, you know, we're kinder to the white men. But over here, we got a person of color, a young woman. All systems go, unleash the hounds. I mean, like, it's, it's comical. It's comical is what it is. But see, again, I want to say it again. When they have nothing on Bernie, they have to make these fake scandals. And one of the, th the wells that they keep going to is, and this is the implication, the implication is, He's an old white guy, therefore he has to have some sort of retrograde social beliefs. And he has to be unwoke to a point where we could use it against him. And so that's why they have all these scandals that they make up. Oh my god, Bernie said a woman can't win. There's videos of him in 1987, before I was born, bro, saying, I think a woman can win and I think uh, that things are changing, but not fast enough. That guy behind, the, behind closed doors is like, you know... You know, toots, I don't think these women got to cut out. I don't think they're cut out for the big leagues. That's not happening. Come on, man. It's just, it's so over the top and it's so silly. Um, and then, guys, what these fake journalists fear is accountability. That's the thing. It's like, the thing that's beautiful about Twitter is that it has democratized, democratized the public square. So... Everybody has a voice now. Now, don't get me. Are there downsides? That's sure. Are there instances of like genuine harassment and creepy stuff? Absolutely. I mean, that's it's human nature that some people you get a, a big enough group of people, some people are going to be bad apples. That happens, of course. But listen, the overwhelming majority of the time, and with most people, you're just now everybody has a voice and they can respond to what you're doing. And back in the day, in the 1990s, if there's a smear article written about a good, uh, you know, candidate. There's no response to that. People just are force-fed the propaganda, and they just have to deal with it. And the media can lie and misstate and do whatever, and you just got to take it. And there's no avenue to respond. Well, now, there is an avenue to respond. And you got people out there who, 500,000 medical bankruptcies every single year, 7 million people losing their health insurance, wages still stagnant. The list goes on and on. And now all these people have a voice. And when you go after the candidate who's trying to fix those problems, they're going to be mad at you. And they're going to say, no, 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 you're not stating that correctly. What you're saying here is wrong. And, and these guys look at it and they're, they're shocked and they're offended that everybody has a voice now. And they're, they used to be able to say whatever they wanted with no accountability. And now they say stuff and there's accountability. And they, it feels like oppression to them. It feels like oppression to them when people respond to their nonsense. Now, just for the record, this doesn't mean that every time there's a Twitter mob, they are right by definition. No, of course not. But it just so happens that most of the criticisms from mainstream media against Bernie Sanders are preposterous. And so when his supporters are like, hey man, that's not true, that's called correcting the record. That's called accountability. That's called you're not just going to get away with spewing your propaganda. And then the final point is, here we go again. Listen, tone analysis... This is the tone analysis point that the New York Times did. It's, it was stupid then, it's stupid now, and it's always going to be stupid. So the tone analysis is, as the New York Times said, we don't need to replace one over-promising bomb thrower with another. In other words, Bernie Sanders and Donald Trump are basically the same because they over-promise and they're bomb throwers. It's the horseshoe theory. The far right and the far left are basically the same. Hoo hoo hoo. Except the exact opposite is true. I don't care what tone you use as you're getting me health care. I care that you're getting me health care. I don't care what tone you use as you end the wars. I care that you end the wars. Now, Donald Trump, 7 million people lost health care under his administration. 
He's increasing our number of wars. Bernie Sanders wants to give everybody health care and end the wars. The fact that they both yell at their rallies is irrelevant. And it's, it's the analysis of a rube. I mean, that is a, a, a dimwit analysis right there. It's, I, I said it, it in the New York Times example. That's the political analysis of a dog. And what do I mean by that? Dogs respond to what? Tone. It's not what you say. It's how you say it that they respond to. And so this is the same thing. It's, oh my God, you know, uh, Bernie and Trump, they're so similar. And the Trump supporters and the Bernie supporters are also similar because they're both like, act like Twitter mobs. Except it doesn't matter to these people that one group of people is talking about, you know, building a wall and not allowing Muslims into the country. And the other group of people is talking about, hey, you know, my dad died because he didn't have health care. Everybody should have health care and a living wage. They go, it's the same because they're both angry. <laughs> oh, man. And uh, as my friend Jimmy Dore says, you wonder why people get their news from YouTube. Now, guys, I'm not like, I don't think of myself as a journalist, as a reporter. I'm not. I'm just a dude. But like just saying basic things <laughs> all of a sudden makes me like, like people want to watch the show. Why? Because I'm not BSing them. <laughs> That's the only reason. Like the, the one thing this show has is I am not bullshitting you. I'm telling you exactly what I think. And that's, people are like, oh my God, revolutionary. <laughs> is it? Is it revolutionary? Apparently it is in this media environment because this is what they're doing on mainstream media. <laughs> people were mean in my mentions. <laughs> Whoop-de-doo! People are dying because they don't have health care. I think that's more important. 